Good evening, friends. Today is a very important day. Today is World Environment Day. The whole world is celebrating this day. And we have been seeing people posting pictures of planting trees all over social media. But do we all know why we are celebrating this day? Do we all know the importance of this day? Before telling you more, let me welcome all of you to day 20 of 100 Days to a Leadership Transformation Series, powered by the team brand 10,000 W Combinator of GCPIT. I'm Aparna Ji Kumar, the Global Co-Chairperson of GCPIT, that is a Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, a not-for-profit registered in India and South Africa. The mission of GCPIT is to handhold, empower, and support SMEs globally. World Environment Day is observed every year on 5th June across the globe. The day is considered to be one of the most remarkable ones for environmental action and to create awareness among people. Annually, the United Nations Environment Program or UNEP organizes various events, but this year the day is being hosted by Pakistan with the theme Ecosystem Restoration. Let's see the history of uh, World Environment Day. The UN General Assembly established the World Environment Day on the first day of the Stockholm Conference on Human Environment, which was held in Sweden from 5th to 6th June in 1972. World Environment Day was celebrated for the first time in the year 1974 with the theme Only One Earth. As years passed, countries came together for the Environment Day celebration every year. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, the theme of 47th World Environment Day is ecosystem restoration. So to talk about this uh, topic, we have a very special person uh, with us today, Ms. Abir Sesi. She is the founder of Abir Sustainable Advisory Board, ba advisory based in Tunisia, providing advisory and training services to companies and suppliers in apparel, fashion, and sports goods wanting to get, get started in their sustainability journey. Textile engineer with solid international experience in sustainability, industrialization, and supply chain. Referent auditor and coach in sustainability and quality. Ambassador of sustainable development goals around the world and have an international social responsibility license. She is also one of GCPIT's Global Women in Leadership Award winners this year. She is the Director General of GCPIT Tunisia. We are proud to have her in our team, uh, W Combinator. So she's supporting us all through our initiatives. Uh, we are really, really proud and honored to welcome Ms. Abir Sethi to our uh, session. Over to you, Abir. Thank you. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you so much for this introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Santosh and GCPIT for inviting me today uh, to celebrate the Environment World Day. And it's a very special uh, day for me and for all of us. Um, so the Environment World Day started in 1972. Uh, the United Nations General Assembly designed 5 June as the World International um, Environment Day, WED. The first celebration under the slogan, Only the Earth, took place on uh, 1974. Um, in the following years, WED has developed as a platform to raise awareness and um, on the problems facing our environment, such, such as air pollution, plastic pollution, illegal wildlife, trade, sustainable consumption, um, sea level increase, and food uh, security, among others. Um, furthermore, WED, helps drive change in conception patterns and in national and international um, environmental policy. So uh, as you say, Aparna, the time for this year for 2021 is ecosystem restoration. So I want to clarify for you, what is ecosystem restoration? What does it mean? It means assisting in the recovery of ecosystems that have been degraded or um, destroyed, as well as um, concern serving ecosystems that are still intact. So um, healthier ecosystems with richer biodiversity yield greater benefits such as more fertile soils, um, bigger yields uh, of timber and fish and larger stores of greenhouse gases. Restoration can happen in uh, many ways, in different ways. For example, um, through actively planting or by removing uh, pressure so, so that nature can recover uh, on its own. Um, 
it is not always possible or maybe desirable to return a, an ecosystem to its original state. So we still need um, farmlands and infrastructure on land that was once forest, for instance, and um, ecosystems like societies need to adapt to changing uh, climate. So between now and 2030, the restoration of um, 350 million hectares of uh, degraded terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems could generate about $9 trillion US dollar in ecosystem services. So restoration could um, also remove between 30 and 26 um, gigatons of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. So the economic benefits for such interventions exceed nine times the cost of investment, and it's very important point. Whereas inaction in, is at least three times more costly than ecosystem restoration. So all kinds of ecosystems can be restored, including um, forests, uh, farmlands, cities, um, wetlands, and oceans, of course. So restoration initiatives can be launched by almost anyone. So anyone can do it, from governments and development agencies to businesses, communities, and individuals. So everyone can contribute. That's because the causes of degradation are many and varied and can have an impact at different scales. So here the question is, how long does it take for an ecosystem to recover? And it's an important question. So numerous human activities, such as logging, pollution, and the introduction of exotic spices negatively impact ecosystems around the world. This negative impact means ecosystems um, lose spices diversity, biomass production, carbon storage, and um, nutrient uptake. An important question is how long does it take for ecosystems to recover from perturbations? So the answer to this question can inform conservation policy and strategies and could help folks management resources. So for, for, for this um, World Environment Day, together with a partner in Santosh, we initially thought of running a global action today with GCPIT by planting trees in all our locations but then we realized that it will be not easy for everyone to do it, um, especially those who of us living in big cities. However, there is something all of us can do today and keep on doing or considering going forward, which is reducing single-use plastic. All of you watching us today please consider getting a reusable water bottle for home, office, and especially travel and commute. Let me ask you, do you have one already? Because I will show you, here is mine. I use it. I'm not sure you, you can see it. So I put it every, every time with me uh, in the car and I have also this one for traveling so I, I can use it daily instead of because all of us can can drink or take every morning a cup of tea or coffee to go to office or to to go for meetings so and every every day we use plastic bags caps and bottles. So um, this is a very small action which can um, reduce the plastic consumption. So um, me, for example, 
I take it with me everywhere and only drink from it. It's good for cold and hot beverage, and hot beverage is also and helps um, you monitor uh, how much water you drink because it's good for uh, one person to drink about eight cups per day, for example. Um, so it's very practical. Plastic waste is also caused by single use shopping bags. We all um, make shopping every day, go to supermarkets, to, uh, to, to bring um, uh, some, some courses. So um, may, so my ask for you is, um, do you consider taking your reusable plastic or not plastic reusable shopping, shopping bag with you when you go to the store or supermarket? So um, it does make a difference. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure I might even inspire your family and friends to do the same. I will show you, here is my favorite uh, shopping bag. It's a reusable shopping bag. And here, what, what I like on it, it's uh, almost old, <laughs> but you see it has been made from uh, a plastic bag. You see it? So when you use your, your reusable, um, shopping bag, you reduce the, the plastic use and you participate to uh, the ecosystem restoration. You see, it's about very small action which make a big difference. So um, yeah, I would love to see your uh, reusable uh, shopping bags if you want. And we can, for example, with a partner and Santosh make, we can vote for the prettiest swan, maybe soon, it will be a great idea. Um, so today we, we celebrate the Environment uh, uh, World Day and I will be focusing on corporate. Given my experience and also I'm heavily involved with corporation as part of my daily consultancy work. So as I'm um, founder of Abir Sustainable Advisory, which is a consulting company for sustainability and quality, and I'm working a lot, I'm focusing a lot about the 17 SDGs. And here in my country, I try to do my best to evolve the, the sustainability mindset. So companies now realize that um, it's time to act and day by day, we see new announcements and environmental commitments across the world. And companies aim to, to be sustainable as they now realize the pressure from clients, other companies, customers, governments, and also investors. So the question is then, how easy or um, how difficult it is since, um, it's the right thing to do. Why don't we see all companies getting started? That's the question. Um, are they wait, waiting for some experts or for uh, someone to push them to do it? Maybe yes. Is it a matter of awareness or prioritization? We know that Paris Agreement has set a target about 2050 aiming to reduce the global warming below 1.5 degrees. That's 30 years from now. But when should we start making an impact now or later? So are companies aware that 2050 is the deadline and not the kickoff? A lot of companies, um, are leading strong steps toward SDGs. Others are, are watching and um, still not convinced by the financial investment uh, necessary to tackle SDGs. Maybe because they don't make a projection, they don't, they don't have a vision, they just think about the financial investment for now. Based on my own experience, I personally believe that most companies um, uh, are running after profits despite of the huge environmental impact 
they are causing as industries. What they don't know is that on the long term, the cost of not doing anything will be higher than the cost of getting started now. So already today and in the near future, customers and consumers, all of us citizens, do prefer to buy sustainable goods and services and investors and governments will reward green companies. Green companies, it means companies who, has, who have um, environmental projects and vision and are um, contributing uh, to, to, to SDGs. So there is a high return in, in investment, the air uh, OI. If corporate minimize the impact of um, industrial actions on the planet, it could have a positive impact on their business and make them resilient. So if they invest in environmental friendly solutions, which protect biodiversity, they will benefit ecosystems and planetary health in general. But what should they start with? This is the question that a lot of companies and general directors and owners ask me every time I talk about sustainability projects or sustainability reports. So it's all about prioritization and qualification. We cannot just start in sustainability journey without making or putting some priorities and making the link with the company project and vision. Sustainability reports are very useful as a starting point. That's what I'm doing right now in, in Tunisia to identify the potential footprint and measure drivers. It's very important to start with this um, step. It gives company um, a clear image about where they should start perhaps um, low hanging fruits, but also major areas that could dramatically change their footprint. The basic footprint um, report could facilitate the action plan, but will also make the companies attractive for clients and also customers and investors for sure. Without awareness, nothing could be accomplished. This is the first step, awareness, and the fact to prioritize the environmental sustainability for each kind of um, company for corporates. Because actually, for example, in Tunisia, all over the world, um, a lot of suppliers, companies in textile, in apparel, in all, all kinds of industries, just prioritize the audits for clients and um, are just trying to do their best to have a good audit report with a good level or with a good note in order to satisfy the client and um, to take some business, a lot of quantity, quantities, a lot of orders in order to make profits. And, grow their uh, turnover. They don't see long-term. So maybe we need to explain that the environmental sustainability is very, ha has a lot of benefits for companies, for industries, and they will make more and more profits toward um, sustainable uh, development goals. And I was talking about reports, the first step to do. That means as a starting point, make a report, sustainability reports. Why? In order to make corrective actions or corrective action plan, which will take their business to grow and become more and more resilient. It's not only about making a positive impact in the areas where they operate but it will help preserving our planet for the future generations. 
we don't act just to, to make profit right now. We act, we, that means citizen, government, um, industries, everyone, we act just to save our planet because after 100 years, the planet will not be the same and maybe the future generation will not have a planet to live on. So peer pressure will increase and sustainable companies will indirectly push competition to follow their path and lead similar actions. So every single action counts. Every single tree matters. And every single fish in the ocean plays an important role. And global warming is threatening our planet, our health, our well being. So, corporates share the same responsibility as all of us inhabitants on this planet and users of its resources. So, clean water, renewable energy, responsible consumption, multi use plastic all of these actions can be a part of our daily life. All of these actions could also lead to successful transformation of every company. Small or big steps, everything counts, everything helps. So this is the message I want to, to give and I want to encourage and I want to welcome every single person trying to make a small step towards environmental sustainability in order to save the planet. Finally, it's, it's our big home. It's our planet and it's about our life and the future generation, our children's uh, future life as well. So um, thank you so much and happy World Environment Day. I'm here to, to answer your questions if you have. And if you want to show me your usable bags or caps or bottles, I will be pleased to see all of them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abir. That was uh, really an eye-opening session. Uh, just. Um, Yes. And uh, as you said, we all can do our bit for our ecosystem restoration by reducing single-use plastics, using re reusable water bottles, and I uh, know yeah, uh, the shopping bag you showed. So all these are very small actions which we can uh, take to save our environment. And as you said, every single step counts, right? So uh, I open uh, this floor to questions. Anybody have questions to ask? Yes, Pravina. Thank you, Aparna. And uh, thank you so much, Abir. It's so, you know, encouraging, I can say, because uh, uh, I think so past one month, I've been talking about that. Uh, I'm into, I'm, you know, I can say I'm Earth Empath. And, you know, I'm into uh, biodegradable and compostable covers, and which started recently, Green Bharat, uh, last month. And uh, yeah, I I've been doing like, you know, campaigning about no plastic. And then I, one fine day, I've realized that, you know, let me come up with a solution. That would be the, uh, you know, the show short thing. So we have started that. And for especially in COVID times, yeah, the uh, caps, head caps and the glouses, uh, we are trying to pitch into that as well. But uh, the, yeah, uh, the response is a little bleak in India, but, you know, probably we need to do more, uh, uh, because move on and because COVID times we are unable to reach out corporates and uh, have meetings with them. Probably once uh, COVID times ends up like, you know, you know, where we can move a little easily, probably we'll penetrate into the market. So thank you so much. Thank you, Pravina. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, probably, uh, you know, as she has explained very beautifully, so we have to implement that. Right. Any suggestions from your end, Abhir? Like, you know, how do we uh, get into, like, you know, can we say that, you know, this is a, a, a mandatory, like, you know, you have to, so when we approach them, the convincing, uh, any any suggestions on that front? 
as a manufacturer of uh, those um, you know sustainable uh, you know biodegradable and compostable covers to you know uh, uh, in use in place of uh, plastic covers so wherever uh, it is one single use i can say so how do we can like you know any suggestions from that front how do we uh, put forward or you know make them like you know convince them okay so you are um you are a factory you are producing um plastics that's yeah, not plastic biodegradable and compostable covers right. okay yeah. great. which has to great. be supplemented great. to yeah yeah Th that's great of course you have um a uh, very, very important role to um uh, to to just to make distribution and to encourage people to use it um so here it's started by companies um yeah like you like other companies because we have a lot of factories producing plastic okay so um we cannot stop all of them once but we encourage um the the we encourage the, the customers the consumers to reuse it and to make um to make some profits for example because if we reuse, uh, for example, this bottle of this bag, that means we will reduce the, um, uh, the turnover of, uh, of uh, the producer for, for, for sure. Um, so that's why the raw material is, is very, um, ha has a very big impact in order to make a, a green product, let me say, it's a green production, green product. That means it's not affecting the environment, um, but it, it has um, a responsible production. A, a responsible production is something responsible toward the environment. That means you respect the environment. You don't use a lot of water. You don't, you don't use a lot of electricity. You just try to optimize everything you can find in, in stores, in supermarkets, some products uh, which are eco-friendly, or you can find a sticker or a label on which it's written um, this product has been produced by uh, low um, water um, uh, consumption, for example. That means it's, it's a little bit eco-friendly. That means you make a responsible production in order to make the marketing later, because the consumers later will care about this, um, this product. If you, you show me two products um, and I found one which is eco-friendly, I will choose it. I will encourage this company, I will encourage this kind of production of responsible production to buy it, to make them um, to increase their turnover. Um, but I don't encourage other, um, other, for example, kind of production which use a lot of toxic uh, chemicals or uh, carcinogenic um, chemical products or which is impacting the environment and also the, the, the human, the, the employees as well. Um, that's everyone plays a role. The, the the owner of the company, the employees, the the, the customer, the consumers, the co the government. Everyone has a single role in order to encourage the responsible and the sustainable production. Because it all starts by making a responsible production, and the the final product will will play its role later with awareness and with um, a good use and with a respect for for the environment yeah thank you everybody. i hope i answered your your question yes, yes. The, 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 uh, you know you know summarize thing yeah we the awareness is something has to be and we they have to understand like we should make them understand this kind of a campaigning like you know what is that gaining out of it how they are going to save it yeah thank you so much thank you thank you thank you Thank you, Prerna. Thank you, Abir. Uh, any other questions? Do we have? I don't see anything in the chat. If anybody has any questions, please unmute yourself and ask. Abir is here to answer all your questions. I think uh, nobody is asking now. Maybe later on they may post in the Facebook uh, live chat. So. I'll get back to you. And uh, Santosh, yes. sustainable marketing. Sustainable, sustainable marketing is it's very, very good question. Um, as, I, as I met today, the, the policy of environment in my city here, um, in Monastir, as I'm living near the sea, 
Um, so I discussed with him in order to, to, organize, um, to organize a cleanup day. Um, I wish to organize it today for the Environment uh, World uh, Day, but it will be maybe for the cleanup day or maybe once per month or once per week because um, summer is coming and we need to clean the, uh, we need to clean the coats uh, here. So um, sustainable marketing, for example, for this kind of cleanup day, I remember last time I go to the radio station in order to invite citizens and all people um, without any consideration of who is participating, which company to make some, uh, some marketing, but it will be good and great if we can make sustainable marketing. That means the company who is, for example, selling um, some plastic goods or reusable plastic bottles, for example, for, for customers, they can participate in this uh, kind of um, cleanup day, for example, in order to show and in order to not, not to show people, but to, um, to increase and to enhance the awareness level uh, for, for them and for the employees and for people. Um, maybe also avoid using a lot of plastic um, water bottles because we use it all the time when working, traveling, uh, driving. So that's why I, I was thinking about small, um, small actions to, to make some, uh, some uh, marketing. And by the way, a friend of me g gave me this, um, th this, this cap this, uh, for, uh, for tea and coffee and also for water. I, I, can, I can consider it as sustainable marketing because he's, um, he's participating, he's making um, uh, an action toward environment and it encourages uh, people to use this cap instead of using uh, thousands of plastic caps or for water, for tea. Every time I go to take a tea, I, I, I use it, uh, I use it uh, with me. So I can call this, action uh, sustainable marketing yeah we can find uh, some amount of plastic on it but it's okay if we use it and reuse it for uh, for years and years we can save a lot of plastic caps for uh, for drinks so uh, also we cannot stop producing plastics once it's it's about going step by step it's about um, trying to make a sustainable production and sustainable use. That means a factory or a company or um, also citizen can just make some, uh, uh, let me say, videos or posters or uh, webinars or meetings. We can meet friends or people in, in, in coffee shop, for example, and talk about these kinds of actions and show, um, if I show, my, for example, my my reusable bag, uh, I use it every day, every week. Uh, it, can, it can make um, a, an influence, an impact. That means my friends and my family will do the same. And that's what is happening. Um, people who are around you can just take a good habit and use it and they will be satisfied with it because it will reduce a lot um, uh, the conception of plastic bags, for example. And I was focusing on corporate because uh, I made a lot of uh, audits before, uh, in, um, also environmental audits and assessments. And, I, and I've seen that in industries today, they're just focusing on having a good level to satisfy the clients, to have some business, to make profits. It's the classic way it's the classic thinking way it's not sustainable and for sure they are all the time facing the same kind of problems and they're all all the time facing the, the same um uh, yeah the same limits for for their for their profits so that's why sustainability reports um and corrective action plans and the qualification for their business, for their factories, for their production 
that means they need some help in order to see um, what is not going well and on which um, they, they can make actions in order to save the environment. Once they do it, they will see the results because we cannot oblige them to do it. It's not about obligation, it's not a must. It's, we know that it's a must for, for, for instance, but they will see the positive impact and they will be aware when seeing ch things changing um, positively. We talk about positive impact, not only for the environment, but also for their business, for the profit, for the turnover, uh, for uh, also for the employee satisfaction, they will be satisfied and the, the customer, the consumers will be satisfied finally. So um, in my point of view, um, that this is the, the, the sustainable uh, marketing. What do you think? Yes, yes, you have given a couple of good uh, examples uh, that ought to always, uh, you know, be part of this sustainable marketing model, right, you are. So, uh, will you give uh, some example in terms of adopting sustainability on day-to-day -day life? Because uh, once we start practicing on a day-to-day, -day, then we'll be able to teach our mind or we'll be able to educate ourselves that uh, we should do it in a regular basis and then our children and the family member will know and then the ultimate change will happen because uh, you know planting a tree on a day in a single day it's not going to solve the problem and it's not going to uh, solve it in uh, if at all if you are just doing a knowledge session for a day it's not going to so we need to come up with a, some sort of uh, you know daily uh, mantra uh, uh, the way we do meditation the way we adopt uh, you know good food in terms of millets and various other food i think we have to uh, come up with some sort of strategies where we develop some uh, uh, either in the mantra type of form or something and so that we every day on a daily basis practice it uh, because the way uh, you devote yourself uh, to the god i think we should also devote yourself for the esc and see the devotion thank you so much santosh thank you thank you santosh Mr. Devendranath says, nice presentation created awareness of not to use single-use plastic products like water, plastic water bottles, single-use plastic bags can include plastic straws as well. Thank you, Devendranath, sir. Uh, do we have any other questions? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. And Abir, that was an awesome session. Thank you so much once again uh, for uh, coming uh, on this very special and important day and talking to us about uh, sustainability and uh, ecosystem restoration. Uh, I was reading today, according to UN, uh, in order to meet the sustainable development goals, ecosystem degradation must be stopped and restoration undertaken on a mass scale. This includes all environments from forests and oceans to savannas and peatlands. Global ecosystem restoration will also help us build back better from COVID-19, preventing future pandemics and creating millions of jobs. On an average, for every dollar spent on re uh, restoration, at least $9 of economic benefits can be, uh, expected, nine, uh, can be expected. Currently, there is insufficient support for the hundreds of thousands of restoration initiatives worldwide. Because of this, UN has decided to make the years 2021 to 2030 the decade for ecosystem restoration. This will provide a platform for governments, private sector companies, civil society, and local communities with a focus on indigenous people, women, and youth to engage globally and scale up restoration initiatives. It will also focus on the best practices for designing, implementing, and sustaining restoration initiatives with a goal of restoring the relationship between humans and nature by expanding healthy ecosystems and halting their degradation. I think we all can do our part. Every small step counts, as Abir said, and even if they are baby steps, right? Thank you so much, Abir, for that eye-opening session on ecosystem restoration on this very special World Environment Day. I thank our audience too for being with us all through the series. We hope these sessions are useful to you and they will help you create huge changes in the society once the pandemic is over. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, let us be the change we want to see in the world. 
Hope you like today's session. And if you would like to connect to Abir, you can go to our website, gcpid.org, and you have an option to connect her uh, through email. If you feel you are an exceptional leader and you want to join us in our mission, please contact us at gcpid.org. And if you like today's session, please go to our Facebook page and post your positive feedback there. See you all tomorrow with another special guest on sustainability. Till then, this is Apanaji Kumar signing off. Stay safe, take care, and Abir. Over to you for a closing remark. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you so much, my family, GCPIT. Thank you, everyone, for your question and participation. And um, yeah, as written here, I just advise to make uh, to follow these three steps: reimagine, recreate, and restore. As you said, a small action counts, and uh, don't be afraid. Go ahead and consider that you are a change maker. All of us are change makers and we can make the change by small actions. So uh, let's save our planet together. I was very pleased to be here today with you. It's always a great pleasure. Thank you GCPIT, Aparna, Santosh and everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abhi. Thank you. Thank you audience for joining us today. See you all tomorrow. Till then, take care and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you.